want to pick up on some stuff about motion and movement. I was saying in a video I made a while back about um, about movement. Because in a sense there's, there's, there's several different descriptions of what movement is and several under, understandings of it. I mean there's a whole set of understandings which come from physics. You know, movement as it's described within Newtonian physics is quite different to movement as it's described within um, relativity theory. And they're different descriptions of the same physical phenomena, but they're quite different descriptions. Uh, and they lead to different kinds of predictions. Or, or they have different limited um, frames of operation, and if you step out of those, then the predictions become um, unstable. And then there's movement, as it's understand, understood through the, the human sensorium, through human perceptions, how the instrumentation of the human body understands movement. And that's quite different. You know, because we have all these cues for movement, which don't really figure within the physical descriptions at all. You know, our understanding of movement is based on things like acceleration and deceleration, or on um, changes in direction and the kinds of, uh, you know, what that does to your inner ear, what it does to the organs of your body, you know, what's happening inside you when you move. Uh, it takes its cue from just things like bumpiness, you know, I mean, bump, uh, going over a bumpy surface. Um, it takes its cue from wind resistance, feeling the wind in your face when you're riding a motorbike or when you're on a fairground ride. Uh, it takes its cue from what's around you. You know, if everything else is, if 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 you have this, <laughs> yeah, if everything else seems to be to, to to be in a stable relationship to itself, to each, to one another, but you or the thing that you're on appears to be changing its relationship to everything else. And it feels like you're moving. I mean, that's the, the illusion behind the, uh, the what is it called, the, the magic swing or the phantom swing or something you sometimes get at fairground rides. You know, where they have a swing suspended in a what appears to be a room. And then what they effectively do is they, they, they move the whole room around you. But the illusion is that it's you that's swinging because everything in your frame of reference is moving. So it feels, so the kind of logic of your brain is that you're the one that's moving. Um, so there's a whole set of, as I say, movement cues that the human body and its instrumentation provides, none of which have anything to do with physics, really, or very, of only a kind of tangential relationship to, to real physics. So that movement is quite different. Uh, yeah, and I think the same is probably true. As I said, yeah, we can't feel real movement at all, as I, I think I mentioned in my previous video. There is no, we don't have an, an organ of sense which just registers movement. We only register, as I said, those things to do with um, changes in direction and changes in and changes in speed, uh, and things like optical flow. You know, with things moving past you. I mean, that's another movement cue, isn't it? But as I say, movement itself we don't feel, which is why we don't feel the Earth move under our feet. We would only start to feel it if it sped up or slowed down or got really bumpy or something. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm still thinking about this in relation to will and uh, yeah, free will, I guess. And, and But generally those kind of illusions that are thrown up and the artefacts that are thrown up by incorrect paradigms, which I think will is one of. Um, this idea, this just by analogy, this sense of movement that we don't have right now, we don't feel the earth moving, but we do have an embodied sense of what movement means, and it's quite a different thing. I mean, that does throw up its own artefact. I mean that, you know, those cues to movement that I just talked about, you know, do kind did kind of figure in some speculations in uh, medieval times, didn't they? And that led led to completely incorrect physical predictions and 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 artifacts. So you would have this thing like uh, like impetus. You know, impetus featured a lot in medieval um, proto physics. That was the kind of energy that you put into something, which kept it moving. You know, what I mean, you roll something along the ground. In medieval times that would be because it's been given an impetus and the impetus is somehow inside the object and when the impetus drains away or runs out like a fuel then it stops uh, but that's an, inc that's an incorrect uh, it's incorrect uh, model of what's happening there um, it's entirely based on a, a kind of embodied paradigm rather than an objective physics paradigm and it leads to these artifacts like like impetus there is no impetus things stop moving because a force acts upon them, like friction or wind resistance. Not because some internal fuel system drains away. Uh, 
Yeah, and, and you know, ballistic, all early ballistics manuals had all kinds of incorrect drawings of what the flight of a of a missile looked like. Because of that, you know, I mean, if a missile flies through the sky because it's got impetus in it, and then when it runs out, it falls to the earth, then the flight of a missile would be a straight line while it's got impetus, and then a falling away when the impetus drains away. And that's exactly what old ballistics manuals looked like. They did draw missiles doing exactly that path, which is incorrect. You know, a missile starts to fall to the earth as soon as it's fired. It, it describes a parabola through the air, you know, a low curve. There is no impetus. It's just, uh, you know, gravity constantly works on it and, air, and wind resistance constantly works on it from the moment it leaves the barrel of the gun or the bow. Uh, so, yeah, just, yeah, I suppose this is just a fleshing out of what what uh, artifacts can be thrown up by using an embodied paradigm of how the world works. Impetus is an example of an, of a, an artifact thrown up by an embodied paradigm of what movement and motion is. And I suspect that will is also an artifact that's thrown up by an embodied paradigm of what the relationship between psyche and, and world is or something like that.